Welcome to the Copper deployment video. In this video, we install Copper packages, burn a Copper image to a USB drive, boot a compute node using that USB drive, configure a file server to support a Copper deployment, configure a controller to support a Copper deployment, as well as boot and scale a virtual cluster on top of that deployment. A text version of this tutorial is available at wiki.gridcentriclabs.com. We're going to install the Copper management stack on a 64-bit Ubuntu machine. The first thing we do is visit the Gridcentric Labs wiki download page and add the Gridcentric Debian package repository to this machine's package sources. Let me cap it, copy the package source line, add it to our Ubuntu repository, and update the package information. Now we take a look at the packages, grid-centric packages that are available. And of the listed packages, the ones that we're interested in are grid-centric controller, grid-centric visualizer, grid-centric copper images, and grid-centric www. So we're going to install these packages. Um, it should be noted that uh, the grid-centric copper images packages is actually quite large and it takes longer than shown in this video to unpack it. We've shortened it for your convenience. The next thing we're going to do is uh, prepare an image with which we can boot a copper compute host. Uh, before we do this, we're going to set the password on the copper compute host image so that uh, if we want to SSH into a compute host directly, to use to do that. To set the password on copper compute host images, I'm going to use a tool called Gridcentric Change Password. And as it, the terminal is telling me right now, you have to be root to run that uh, tool. So I'm going to go ahead and change my password. And as you can tell, it's, I'm changing it to a very weak and bad password. It is suggested that you change this tool a stronger password than I'm setting. Uh, I should also note that this process as well takes a little bit longer than as it's actually shown in the video. Uh, we've shortened it uh, so that you're not spending a lot of time just watching a blank screen. Okay, so the new copper images are, have been generated and we're going to burn a USB device drive with a boot image for a copper host and then boot a copper host from it. So to use this I'm going to use the DD program to dump the image data directly to the USB disk. This too needs to be run as root. And it takes a lot longer than this but uh, I've, I've shortened it down for the video. Now I just sync, eject that drive and we're going to uh, boot the compute host. So I'm just going to pull my USB key from uh, my management node, which is actually my workstation, uh, pop it into my compute host, uh, which has already been configured to boot from USB. I'm just going to turn it on. Uh, I should mention that I've already set up a, a um, DHCP server that will give that compute host uh, an IP address of 192.168.1.102, and uh, that's just part of the network configuration. We're not actually going to cover that in the uh, video. So the node is booting up. Uh, once the node is booted up, uh, basically all we'll have to do is set up a file server to serve up uh, the root disk images for virtual machines, uh, as well as configure the controller whose packages that we've already installed. And uh, after that, we'll be able to create, boot, and scale virtual clusters. So it shouldn't be too long. All right, the host is booted. Let's get. So once the compute host is booted up, uh, we're going to set up an NFS server to serve up the root disk images from which our virtual clusters are going to boot. So to do that, we're going to install the NFS kernel server uh, package. And uh, once that's installed, uh, we're going to set up slash export as uh, the exported share. So we 
make that directory and uh, edit etc exports to add an entry for uh, for that particular export, particularly to the host 192.168.1.102. Uh, so this export only needs to be made uh, made available to the copper compute hosts. Um, so we're going to export those newly added shares, and they're visible. And we're going to run GC host info to see what the controller has picked up. Note that I have to enter login credentials here, and uh, we want to avoid that in the future, so we use the issue key command uh, to retrieve a passwordless like, like key that we can uh, use to run the command line utilities. Uh, we also need to set the grid centric user uh, environment variable, and then we can run GC host info without command uh, passwords. So the next thing after that is to download and, in and set up the copper license that uh, enables copper to actually manage hosts. So I'm just going to download the free license key here from uh, the gridcentriclabs.com website and that's been copied into my downloads directory and I'm going to copy that into opt gridcentric licenses. Uh, once that's done I'll do a GC config reload and uh, check the gridcentric output log and if you see that line there it basically indicates that, grid that the copper has picked up the new newly added license. So we do a GC host info again, and we see that node 2 is there, and we're going to try to activate it using GC host. And uh, it's telling us that the, net, the default and grid-centric networks on that host haven't been configured. Now I know that ETH0 is on this host is, is going to be used for, for all network activities, so I'm going to set both network.default grid-centric to ETH0. Let's try activating it again. And it gives us an error saying that it doesn't know how to configure ETH0, the interface on node 2. So we're going to tell it, configure it to configure it using DHCP, and, uh, and then activate that host. So we're going to launch GC host info, and the host is copper is provisioning the host, and it should be uh, activated, and now it's online. So we're going to use this tool called uh, Cluster in a Box to download install a virtual cluster. At this point, our deployment has basically been set up and, and are, is ready to go and then actually start booting up virtual clusters. But before we can do that, we need to download a virtual cluster root image and install it into our exports that we just set up. So Cluster in a Box gives us a graphical user interface to do this. Uh, and I'm going to go through this and start the visualizer at the same time so we can visualize the cluster. Uh, so I'm just going to go through all the defaults here and, and the main point in Cluster in a Box is that it, it automatically downloads the root disk image, installs it in the correct location, and it uses the Gridcentric API to create virtual clusters uh, automatically, and actually automatically boot it. So it's uncompressing this, uh, the root disk image, and once it's ready to go, it should be, we should see a new virtual cluster pop up. There we go. So the new virtual cluster has popped up and it's booted and the visualizer is showing it. And I'm going to use the GCVM console command to get a console on this virtual machine. Uh, let's find out what its name is first. Okay, Ubuntu 9.04-0 is the root uh, or is the master virtual machine for that virtual cluster that we just created. We just logged in and we can see that we have a virtual cluster with just one VM right now, and I'm going to try to clone out three machines. Uh, it turns out that there's not enough resources on that host to clone support three virtual machines, but it can support two. So I've just made two virtual machines. I'm going to SSH into one of the machines I just created, and, and uh, yeah, announce that I'm now on a clone. <coughs> now we kill off those cloned virtual machines, coming back down to just the uh, original, and we're just going to shut down that, that VM our basic smoke test of, of the copper deployment is complete. Uh, the shutdown actually goes through a full clean shutdown of the, uh, the root, uh, master virtual machine. So it should be disappearing shortly. And uh, we're done. Thank you for watching. You can get more information about copper at uh, gridcentriclabs.com. You can also visit the blog for informative posts on uh, virtualizing distributed applications easily on top of the Copper platform, uh, or visit our wiki site for documentation.